So now let's uh, discuss some special, uh, no, not special, uh, 5G spectrum services and techniques. Okay. So 5G, 5G is the first uh, mobile technology. Okay. 5G is the first mobile technology <clears throat> that operates on a much higher frequency band with previous wireless technologies with frequencies up to 1 gigahertz. Currently in the 3GPP specification up to 90 or 80, no, 80 gigahertz and up to 450 megahertz. So ito lang yung technology ngayon na meron, yung, meron ganyang span ng, ng operating frequency. If you look at the existing frequencies like GSM, GSM in the Philippines is uh, just working in the 900 megahertz and 1800 megahertz. Dalawa. Dual band tayo sa GSM. In the UMTS or 3G, we are using uh, 850, 900, 2100. Okay, so tatlo. Three frequencies, no? Three, three bands. For the LTE, we are using marami na, no? Medyo marami na. 450, 700, 900, 850, um, 2100, okay? 2600, 2300, so almost seven or eight. But in the 5G, you can see malawak yung frequency niya. After 450, using yung mga existing frequencies natin sa 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G, we can still use. Okay, we can still reuse at 5G. And then uh, added, they added um, additional set of frequency. We call it the FR2, the frequency range 2, uh, which, what we, which is what we call the millimeter wave. Okay, so it operates uh, at the frequencies above 24 gigahertz. Dito. No, hindi na tayo sa ano. So, millimeter wave. Okay. So, your millimeter wave communications enables us to use much of the larger bandwidths, up to 800 megahertz or more. Okay, so we can support the data transfer of up to 8, 10 gigabit per second or even 20 gigabit per second as uh, yung target ng 3GPP, no? Okay. Next is uh, we are using the beamforming. Yeah. So meron tayong beamforming na ginagawa no? sa, sa 5G. So beamforming uh, um, lets you to use a special type of antenna that has a lot of antenna elements and combining those antenna elements to steer the beam no? kung, nasaan yung, ano, kung nasaan yung mga subscribers. So you can steer vertically or horizontally, or can improve the antenna gain. No? Kapag ka pinagsama-sama niya yung mga antenna elements. We call it the beamforming. And also, we are apply, apply, applying the massive MIMO uses of multiple antennas uh, on both the base station and the mobile uh, device no? para mag-improve yung signal quality and increase the capacity of the network. Okay? And then we have also the network slicing. Yeah. So network slicing, so unlike sa LTE last time na ang ginagawa natin is nagsasama-sama tayo, we are uh, um, using the core network or network as one, but this time we have a different slice. Okay, we have a different slice. So what are the, those different slices? You know what? What are those? So we have the slice for EMBB. We have a slice for uh, MMTC. And then we have a slice for URLLC hindi tayo magkakasama sa core network. Okay, so if you are using uh, EMBB or you are only downloading, you are not mixed with the URLLC users. You are not mixed with the uh, IoT users. You have a different slice of the network. You have a different virtual uh, slice in the network. You are using the physical network, but you have virtually different slice of the network. So that's what we call the network slicing. And then you can also, you can imagine that, like for example, if you are very familiar with the APN, access point number or name. Okay, so sometimes, right, if you are using the internet and if you are techy enough, you check your iPhone or your Android and then you want to change the APN. In the 5G, you can do that also. And that also defines the, um, the network slice. So the network will immediately know if you are an EMBB user, URLLC, or a massive IoT or a MMTC user. Next is uh, 
LTE, dual connectivity, and LTE coexistence. Currently, right now in the Philippines and in other parts of the world, um, the architecture that we have adapted so far at the early stage of 5G was the NSA. Okay, NSA. NSA means the non-standalone mode. NSA. Non-standalone mode. So when we talk about NSA, you have the LTE core network. We call it the EPC, Evolved Packet Core. So you have the core network of LTE. So currently, you have the LTE here. So because uh, in our country, LTE is uh, a mature technology. So if you want to deploy 5G in a faster way and efficient way, uh, what you need to do is uh, you have the 5G node be here or G node be here. You don't need to create a new core network. What you need to do is connect this 5G to the EPC and then connect it to the LTE as secondary node. We call it the secondary node. And then this will become the master node. Okay. So anything, any UE or 5G UE device cannot connect directly to 5G unless it will go first to the LTE and then the LTE will add the 5G as a secondary carrier. And then that's the time that the UE will have a 5G signal here. We call it the dual connectivity. Okay. We call it the dual connectivity. Meaning if you're looking at your phone right now and that is a 5G capable device and then you can see a 5G logo, your phone is connected to the LTE and 5G network in the same time. We call it the dual connectivity or the ENDC. Okay. So that's uh, one of the techniques that we are using right now. And of course, uh, cloud-optimized architecture. Okay. So in the cloud-optimized architecture, I'll just erase this one. In the cloud-optimized architecture, <clears throat> um, we can improve you know, the efficiency of the network depending on the application. Like for example, if we are, apply, if we are supporting... Um, um, MMTC or uh, ultra reliable and low latency communications, some of the components in our 5G network could be moved near to the subscriber to further lessen the latency. No, para ilapit natin yung, ano, yung part ng, ng, ng network na yun sa mga subscriber para mas bumilis yung latency natin. So that's what we call the cloud optimized architecture. No? So nagbabago yung ating architecture. It's not a monolithic. That's why when we talk about open run as well, if we incorporate it to the 5G uh, techniques of uh, optimizing the cloud architecture, and then you have the open run where you can also disaggregate the functionality of uh, each component, you can achieve itong cloud optimized architecture. Okay.